The lab that we're going to be working on this week will deal with magnetism. And we're going to look more of at a qualitative version of magnetism in the lab and a little bit less on the quantitative that we've seen in some of the previous labs. So as a quick review, just to go over the major things that we're going to be looking at, let's uh, quickly cover the basic components of magnetism. First thing that we're going to look at is the Lorentz force. And that says that if we have a charged particle with a value of q, and it is inside, and it's moving at a velocity v, and it's inside of a magnetic field, which we'll call b, that the force that is applied on that charged particle is proportional to q times the velocity times the magnitude of the field. Now we have to remember that velocity and magnetic field are vectors. So we have to add them, or we have to multiply them in a special way. And the way we multiply it is using the wonderful little cross product. And that cross product pretty much reduces down to that our velocity, the direction our velocity is going, and the direction of our magnetic field have to be perpendicular to each other. So this is where we get our first right-hand rule. And that first right-hand rule that we normally get says that if we have our velocity pointing in one direction and our magnitude of our uh, B field, our magnetic field, pointing in another direction, they will take our fingers, our first finger points in the velocity, our second finger points in the magnetic field, and our thumb would point, which is directly at you in this case, points in the direction that the force comes about. The second one that we look at is if we have a long wire. If we have a wire that has a current I in it, the magnetic field that will be produced by a moving charge will have a specific direction that's associated with it. And the direction that the magnetic field will uh, be created from this wire will, again, follow another right-hand rule. And that one goes, if we have as I've drawn, the current flowing in a wire in this direction, we point our thumb in that direction, our fingers will be wrapped around in a direction that will show us which way the magnetic field will be pointing. So in that case, the magnetic field comes out of the page here and then back into the page and wraps around in these concentric loops. And as we get further away from the wire, our field is going to get weaker and weaker. And last but not least, our third rule that we have, this is Faraday's law. This says that a changing magnetic field will give rise, or changing magnetic flux will give rise to an induced current or an induced electric field, which pretty much says that if we have a magnetic field in this area around us points in the, say for or this sake, in the downward direction, that the magnetic field, if it's constant, nothing's changing. We don't care. However, if this magnetic field is pointing down, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and gets weaker and weaker, that that magnetic field is uh, decreasing. And the magnetic flux that we have, normally we enclose this with a loop of wire. So if we have a magnetic field that points down through this loop of wire, what's going to happen is if this field is decreasing, though there's going to be a current induced in this loop that's going to try to oppose this change of motion. So if the field is decreasing, the magnetic field or the electric uh, current that gets set up in this loop is going to try to resist that change or try to increase the magnetic field. So in blue, we're going to try to set up a field that points in that direction. And if we remember from our previous ones, uh, one of the other right-hand rules that we can learn, if we have a magnetic field pointing in the downward direction, because of a loop of wire, our fingers show us which way the current is flowing around. So our current will be induced in this direction to set up this increasing, or this downward magnetic field which will counter this decreasing magnetic field, this decreasing external magnetic field. And with those three things, those three concepts, you should be able to start to look at the basic uh, setups, the number, di a number of different setups you have in this lab, 
and just try to get your head around a lot of these concepts. Some of them are a little bit tricky to understand, but you have the tools in front of you to investigate this. So try to get a good qualitative feel for these three laws.